I gotta admit, I was surprised that WandaVision decided to go with a Malcolm in the Middle homage for their 2000 sitcom, because there was an absolutely perfect line they could have used if they had gone the Scrubs route. Can't do this all on my own. I'm no Superman. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, where WandaVision is so nice, we're covering it twice. With so much craziness happening in this incredible Disney Plus series, I'm doing my best to keep you all up to speed, but with our production schedule and this show's time-jumping mechanic, sometimes feels like I'm decades behind. Ugh! Would that our editors had the speed powers of Quicksilver! How was it that Pietro got his powers again? He volunteered to be experimented on by Hydra. Alright, edit team, listen up! Have I got a vacation plan for you guys. So our last theory on WandaVision was pretty much confirmed within 24 hours of us releasing it. The fact that Wanda is the big bad of her own show, despite the fact that she may not know how she's doing it. The fact that she's most likely piloting around Vision's dead body. The fact that she had been to S.W.O.R.D. headquarters before the whole thing started. And the fact that this would be Disney's first major chance to open the door to the X-Men. I know our hit ratio on the channel ain't always the greatest for prediction theories, but man, that was like the home run of episodes. Episodes. Now we're just waiting on the big reveal that sword dude over here is the show's real big bad and the fact that the kids will either disappear or be taken by sword before the end of the series. But let's just stop for a minute to talk about that touchy little subject of the kids. Children. By now, one thing should be pretty clear. Wanda Maximoff's twin sons, Billy and Tommy, are a major part of both the WandaVision story and the MCU as a whole. But where have all the other kids in town gone? In episode 5, Vision raises this exact question. Question. Wonder why are there no other children in Westview? <gasps> oh, sure. In episode 6, we see them running around for Halloween festivities, but we also don't get ourselves an answer as to where they were before and why they're only showing up now. Where were you hiding all these kids up till now? I assume they were all just sleeping peacefully in their beds. No, I... You were always the empathetic twin. I don't... I didn't. Now, that could certainly be Wanda deflecting in an attempt to deny that she's controlling the world, or more likely, she doesn't actually have a full explanation for this. As we heard in episode 5, Do you really think that I am controlling everything? That I, I am somehow in charge of everybody in Westview? And again, here in episode 6, I don't know how I did it. I only remember feeling completely alone. So today, I wanted to dig into all the kids' stuff. What's the deal with Westview's children, and how does it all relate back to Tommy, Billy, the show's ending, and the reality of the MCU moving forward? If you're unfamiliar with these two characters, Billy and Tommy have had a weird life. In the original comics canon, Billy and Tommy were just aspects of Scarlet Witch's belief. Their babysitter, a 500-plus-year-old witch, noticed that when Wanda's life was in jeopardy, or when she was just distracted, the kids would inexplicably cease to exist. Despite this, they still somehow managed to inherit their powers from their mother and uncle. You heard that right, their uncle. Please don't ask me to write a theory about how that one happened. And they eventually grow up to become the superheroes Wiccan and Speed. Eventually, Wanda learns that her kids are fake and her mind gets wiped so that she forgets about them, until of course she doesn't anymore and then goes sicko mode on the universe. But consider this, in WandaVision, Billy and Tommy are really unique thus far because they're the only living things to come from nothing. It's an easy scene to overlook because it was an an episode full of huge moments, but in episode 5, we got this. Those pants are 87% Kevlar. It's not an illusion. Wanda is rewriting reality. Wanda didn't just conjure up new clothes for Monica. She rearranged the materials in the Kevlar jacket that Monica was wearing to create a new period-appropriate costume. What's more, when Wanda wanted to create this fictional reality, she first had to steal Vision's body. Vision was mostly software interfacing with the Mind Stone, and his body, while certainly a marvel of technology, was not really an essential part of what made him him. Wanda, however, needed Vision's body to complete her act within the confines of the town. She's not creating matter out of nothing to make this reality. It's all coming from somewhere. Looks like someone learned a thing or two from watching Full Metal Alchemist. If one wishes to obtain something, something of equal value must be given. This is the law of equivalent exchange. For further proof, look at when Wanda herself leaves the bubble. Unlike Monica's clothes, Wanda is wearing her normal outfit when she leaves the hex. And and while it's not super clear because Marvel did a good job of keeping it out of focus, there doesn't appear to be a wedding ring on her left hand. Her ring, of course, was something that was conjured out of nothingness in episode 1, but because it's made of nothing, it shouldn't exist out in the real world when she exits the bubble. So what then does this mean for Wiccan and Speed? Are they conjured?
appeared from nothing and therefore can't exist outside of the bubble, or if they are real, what are they being conjured from? Well, we know that they're gonna have to be real eventually, not because of anything in the show, but because of the wider business around the Marvel machine. See, there's just a whole slew of new young heroes that are gonna be hitting the big and small screens over the next two years. Cassie Lang, Ant-Man's daughter, just got recast from Endgame, indicating that Marvel is seeing her as a bigger character going forward, literally, as it's likely that she'll eventually become Giant Girl, or Stature, as Cassie Lang tends to do in the comics. The Hawkeye Disney Plus series is centered around Clint passing the torch to Kate Bishop, and later this year, Miss Marvel is supposed to get her own Disney Plus show. And all of this is without mentioning Spider-Man and some of the other long-shot guesses that are coming down the pipe. This lineup alone would create a solid foundation for a new team-up, and another giant crossover event, the Young Avengers. And who are critical members of the Young Avengers? Wanda's kids, Wiccan, and Speed, with Wiccan being especially prominent. You see, Wiccan was something of the face of LGBTQ representation in the Avengers for a while, and it looks like Marvel is gearing up for more representation in the MCU moving forward. In an interview with SiriusXM, Joe Russo, director of Endgame, an actor who cameoed as the first openly gay character on screen, said this. Who else is gay? Uh, but we're uh, gonna find out. You know, there is a, a gay character coming up in uh, one of their films. I think Kevin will make that announcement. With Wiccan just becoming a prominent character in the universe, he is a prime candidate to be that new LGBTQ character. Which means the boys must be real in some capacity here. But how? What are they made out of if moving forward they have to survive outside of Wanda's protective bubble? Well, part of me really, really wanted Wanda to have used Westview's children as the raw material to create her own kids, but uh, it, it, it seemed like it might be a bit too dark for Disney. And in episode 6, seeing her children alongside other kids from the town kind of shot that theory down prematurely. But if the biological building blocks aren't naturally in Westview, where then are they all coming from? Our answer, I think, comes from science. In episode 4, the character Darcy throws out some scientific mumbo-jumbo about Wanda's reality bubble. My equipment registered an extremely high level of CMBR. That's... Relic radiation dating back to the Big Bang. Yeah. Now, that sounds like the sort of stuff that a writer's room would make up to have a character like Darcy sound smart, but CMBR is a legit thing that may just give us the proof that we need to crack the whole WandaVision mystery wide open. You see, CMBR, or Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, is a faint glow of electromagnetic radiation left over from the Big Bang. The initial discovery of CMBR was made when some technicians working on an extremely powerful radio receiver couldn't understand where the faint static they detected was coming from. As scientific American explains it, quote, it is the residual heat of creation, the afterglow of the Big Bang, streaming through space these past 14 billion years. And the most interesting thing about it is that it falls on Earth from every direction with practically uniform intensity. Which is why when Darcy picks up a whole lot of it coming from Wanda's bubble, it's as amazing as Darcy makes it out to be. The only reason that that would happen is if there was a birth of a whole new universe within the realm of that bubble. Just like the Big Bang created the universe and sent out CMBR for billions of years afterwards, it seems like Wanda is legitimately doing the same thing. She's not just reshaping this one reality, she is tapping into another universe, which is sending out its own CMBR waves. It's important to remember that the MCU Wanda has her origins with the Mind Stone. After unspecified experimentation with the Mind Stone, Maximoff gained telekinetic and telepathic abilities. Which, uh, I gotta admit, it's kinda creepy when you consider that the Mind Stone basically created her, and now she's married to the empty husk where the Mind Stone used to be. And we've seen that Wanda's had to take some massive shortcuts to make this reality work, like the stores for mops, locksmithing, flooring, and plumbing. In short, Wanda's a first-generation PlayStation 4 trying its hardest to render Cyberpunk 2077. While she might be able to get most of the basic pieces in place, there's certainly a lot of wonkiness going on. And Episode 6 starts pointing this out explicitly. We're treated to these terrifying shots of citizens on the periphery of Wanda's attention, being forced to endlessly repeat their actions while tears stream down their face. These people near the edge of town, they're barely moving. Are they alive? Children, it would seem, are specifically harder for Wanda to control. Kids. <laughs> Can't control them. No matter how hard you try. 
especially her own kids. She can't put them to sleep. She's unable to stop them from aging themselves up. I suspect it's because they're not her magic. Between the CMBR waves and her inability to control the kids, I get the sense that they're from another universe, that they've been pulled into this reality by Wanda's subconscious or some other more nefarious source that's using Wanda. Need more proof, Pietro? Remember, Wanda can't just create people. She needed Vision's body in Westview to use him, and she rearranged Monica's clothes rather than conjuring new ones. So where did Pietro's body come from? Well, if we assume he is who he says he is and isn't some sort of undercover agent... Hey, I'm not some stranger, and I'm not your husband. You can talk to me. That is just a weirdly suspicious line there, Pietro. It leaves our only option as him being pulled in from another reality. And in this case, I don't think it's a coincidence that the episode Pietro first appears in takes place between the late 80s and early 90s. That time period is the same time period in which Dark Phoenix, the final mainline Fox X-Men movie, took place. New Mutants accepted, but that's kind of a whole separate thing. The MCU's Wanda and Pietro, born in 1989, would either be unborn or babies when this episode was taking place. So she couldn't just grab an alternate reality version of her MCU brother. If Wanda wanted a brother in her weird time-shifted universe, he would need to have been born way before then, like ideally in the late 50s so that the ages would match up. In the Fox universe, Quicksilver was born in 1956, which would make him a perfect late 20s, early 30s to match Wanda's age by the time they hit the late 80s, early 90s. Wanda's powers subconsciously found her a perfect candidate, a brother that would temporally match her her age as she's flash forwarding through the decades. But with this being a Quicksilver from a different universe, it would explain why Wanda in episode 6 doesn't remember Pietro's childhood story exactly the way he tells it. Worse than the costumes mom made us the year we got typhus. Guys, you will cool me. <laughs> That's not exactly how I remember it. It would also explain why there's a 1950s era nuclear propaganda poster on the wall next to the old woman's house in the flashback clip. How does Pietro still remember getting shot to death in WandaVision if he's from a different universe? Yeah, don't really have a solid explanation for that one. But here's the thing. I just don't see a world where the multiverse doesn't get mixed in as a result of WandaVision. Either all of these characters, Wiccan, Speed, and Pietro, are the creations of Wanda, and they just disappear at the end of the show, leading to Wanda ripping open the multiverse to find living versions of them to reclaim her happiness and jumpstart the next phase of the MCU, or they are all real and it's revealed that she's unwittingly pulling them in from other universes since, you know, she can't just have conjured them out of nothing. Or heck, there's always option number three. Maybe Disney went real big brain and my initial impulse was right. Wanda used the children of the town and remixed them to create her own two new bundles of joy. It's a long shot, it is super dark, but man, would that be a shocking twist to put a cap on such an exciting series. You want a powerful new villain for the next phase of movies? Doing something like that would definitely fit the bill. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And if you're interested in getting more Marvel theories, make sure you've hit that subscribe button. We do them all year round, even when there's nothing to talk about in the Marvel Universe. For instance, on screen right now is my related theory to this one about how Thor is also signaling the coming collapse of the multiverse. You heard that right. Wanda is opening up the multiverse and Thor is shutting the whole thing down. That theory is clickable on screen right now, so make sure you check that one out if you missed it, and I'll see you all next week.